Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. I love Chapman. Yeah, before we even get going on this uh, first meeting there, it'll be Tuesday, the 6th of September, with the SB down 28 and 38.95. There was a, a discussion in the Tiger Den about the Roman candle. What's the Roman candle? Well, that's a, a part of my Chapman Wave methodology. A Roman candle is where the price, usually at highs, you see that. And what happens is the price of whatever you're following opens higher, makes a tiny little wick, has a huge candle to the downside, but closes that particular bar either half or two thirds off the base low of that wick. And in this case, at the high, the all time high of 48.18.62, the S&P made a high and then it opened at 47.78.18, popped to 48.18.62, ran down to 42.22.62, which was the 14-period exponential moving average, which it hadn't even touched uh, since uh, back in June or so of 2020. And uh, so that was significant, but then closed at... 45, 15.55. And that produced a candle that I said, uh oh, the rule of the Chapman Wave methodology is if at a high you get this red candle, and the reason why I call it a Roman candle is it makes this tiny little wick. And you know, with a Roman candle, you light the wick and whoosh, it blows up. And my rule of thumb is within two bars, if there is a, a shorter term close, and in this case, I said on a daily basis, halfway into the wick, and that would have been around about 42.22, halfway into the lower part of the wick, be careful because that suggests there's going to be a very quick move down to the low and maybe even close at the low. Well, we did that once. We did that the following session. That was the, the first one was January 2022. The second one was February. And that took two bars in which to break down. And then we went lower and lower until 36, 36, 20, 87 was the low that was formed back in uh, June of this year. So that's the essence of it. And why is it important? If you remember, those of you who were, who were around, when we made that high back in right there. Back in October of 2007, there was a kind of a, almost a doji candle at the high of October. In the following month, September, I said, uh-oh, I had to wait for uh, the September candle to close. And I said, uh-oh, Chapman Wave Roman candle at a high. And that imparts the, the information that says, well, watch out, because if you start closing below that low, and look, we did three months later, we did that huge Roman candle to close below it. So, yes, it's a very important uh, technical indicator, and that's the reason why uh, I've been saying that, yes, we have made some kind of a top in the uh, shorter term, then it went to the intermediate term and the daily chart for intermediate term sell signal, then the weekly went from a sell signal to a sell mode, and then I said, until we close on a monthly basis below the, the nine closes below the 14 period uh, in the monthly chart, Yes, we could possibly have a buy signal, but it's very unusual at a peak B not to go to a C and a D. But all the other indices that already made D, E, or F, and that said, got to be really careful. So in this particular instance, September is going to be a very, very important month. Why? Because so far, you've got an S, and that's the first time you've got that in the monthly chart in a very long time. You've got an S in the... Monthly chart of the Dow, but we're only uh, a couple of sessions into September. We have to wait for the whole month of September to see if that's concluded as uh, a negative. And then we're going from a sell. We're going to have a sell signal. I don't know yet if we'll call it a sell mode, but certainly a sell signal. 
So everything is in play here, and that's the reason why I raise stops that we've got a pretty, uh, a pr very high, in fact, a cash position at this point. Yes, we are trying to buy um, the, the, the Dow for uh, at least a counter and rally. And yes, on Friday, I had mentioned that we had bought. Um, actually, no, I didn't mention it. I, I, subscribers know about this. That we bought just before the close, we bought a little extra insurance. We are short the Dow via the INDU, via the DOG. And that says, and uh, that was from the 22nd, I think it was, of last month. Let me just get to this. So what we're doing right now is we're looking at, oh, I didn't type that in. Yes, it should have been in there. Oh, it's in this chart right here. Uh, that shows you that short right there. And we want to add to it. I took that off this morning. Actually, I probably should have held it because I treated it only as insurance because all of the negativity at the end of last week said that over the week, long weekend, there could be just a horrible uh, uh, move on Sunday night into Monday in the futures market and that would carry through to Monday. But that was the exact opposite. But now we do have that. So as it says right now, overall, the only position we have now is the short side of the Dow. And um, we're waiting to see how this unfolds. And, and the more I thought about it, the more I did the work over the weekend, um, I, I came to two conclusions. One is that the market is now a trading vehicle. And that's how you have to consider it. Um, trading on the short side, the long side, very quick moves. I don't know if you want to use two or three times positions. I'd say that's kind of, uh, that's just a little high risk in this, this case, just for me at this particular moment. But in fact, if you're looking at the SMHs, the semiconductors, Look, they're making new lows as we speak. And that's not a good sign, especially after the weekly chart. Didn't have such a fantastic move to the upside when you think 318.69 double top in January from the November high. Um, and then it pulls back very sharply from 318 to the 204 area. That It's not a, it's not a very bad move chart-wise because you were coming off a low. Just certainly the low from 20, March of 2020 at 96 round number low to 318 spectacular move to the upside. But this is starting to get a little more serious in this weekly chart because, <coughs> excuse me, um, the low that was made just recently in the 100, uh, 200, no, this is the one that was at 188 or something like that. Let me see what it was. 189.94. It's just becoming closer and closer. If we move underneath that, that's not going to be a good sign at all. So, yeah, I, I'm suggesting, you know, cash is, is a position. It's not uh, a cop-out. It is a position. And we are now in a very heavy cash position, uh, number one. Number two is within the context of balances, this bounce, if you look at the SMHs, the little bounce for the last uh, two sessions, that, that that's not very good. If you're looking at the Dow, looking at the bounce, uh, where did that go? The Dow. There it is. Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, we failed in the rally on Friday, and we went to a lower low, and now we've made a lower low still. So that just says that now you can have rallies, but you've got to look at this. Say, you know, average of 31,895 in 2,188, the full average. That's going to be strong resistance and good luck. I'll be back in a Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. The more, the more work I did over the weekend, uh, the more, as I concluded my uh, subscriber video on, was it Monday morning, I... Uh, as I went through different charts over the rest of the day, going to uh, Monday night, and I have to tell you, I, I did drive on Saturday and Sunday. I drove by the U.S. Open. I didn't actually go in. A lot of traffic there. Uh, I wish I had, but um, uh, it was on my way to, to Brooklyn. And uh, the, the, the tennis is absolutely fabulous and the, the the level of playing for me the dexterity and the movements it's not so much the back and forth it's sideways it's running to the net i love that kind of tennis very very physical very active great tennis that we've been watching um tv that is not the real thing and uh, so the more i came to the conclusion that that's very much like the market right now. It's just really choppy. So far, we have to think of more like lower highs and lower lows. That's the shorter term. The other aspect that I, that based on the candle that I spoke about in the S&P, the monthly candle at the high, the Chapman Wave Roman candle, where if you, if you trade within a, a very short time frame, halfway into the wick, the lower long wick, there's a real good chance you're going to take out the low and then go even lower. Um, that sets in place an activity within markets that I think we cannot rule out. And that is, regardless of how we chop and how high we go in this interim period, until we make a really strong V-shaped low, and it doesn't have to be a V-shaped low that has to be retested. And I like to talk about uh, the uh, an internal low and a residual low, or the earthquake and the aftershock. But that V shape, I think, going to a lower low and then rebounding very sharply. And as we go into the lower low, if you look back just three bars to the actual low low point of the ictus, that turnaround moment, um, you usually find that well, it's 15, sometimes even 20 percent. Just those last, the last move down, gives you this extra. Um, 
negative activity before it turns around. Then you look back and say, wow, for, yeah, look at that. Within days, we were above what we were just, you know, whatever, whatever number of days ago. And that says to me that you need a lot of patience and there's nothing wrong in having cash handy. I just think it's really important to be, to be building up some kind of um, what we can call a kitty or at least some way that you can start entries on that V-shaped low if we're able to identify it, whereby you can start initially having a wide stop and then make that stop tighter and tighter until there's a gain. And then you can say, okay, I know exactly what I'm prepared to lose. And I, I don't know what I can gain, but I know what I can prepare to lose. So in that aspect, I don't think we're there. I think the news reports are coming out and we're going to find that the weakening, even in the housing sector, but especially so in the job sector, there's going to be a mental change. You know, in housing, when you, you want to sell a place and you think, oh, man, it's going for, let's just make up a number. Let's just say uh, 400,000. And it's going for 400,000. I'm not prepared to accept anything less than 420. And all of a sudden, uh, somebody comes in and says, I'll give you 400 cash. And you say, no, nope, I want 420. And oh, the next offer comes in, it's like 390. And then finally, when you're deciding that you, you really have to sell, you just want to get out, and you say, okay, I'll take I'll take 380. The person who was offering 380 comes in and says, okay, well, 360, take it or leave it. Um, and that's kind of what we're looking at the job market, that people will say, oh, yeah, I'm working at home. I, I love working at home. I'm not going back to the office. And all of a sudden, that whole aspect of your income shrinking, the job disappearing, or at least being threatened, and then you turn around and say, okay, well, I'll accept it. By that time, the company is already starting to shrink their, their um, employment uh, activity. They, they say, okay, well, you know, maybe we, we, at this particular time with the market so soft, maybe we don't need to increase our employment numbers. So um, this is, I think that's what we're looking at. And therefore, I think there's more time that's needed here before we can actually get a low of significance, one that really has the potential to, to move uh, the markets 30 to 35% up. So that's where I stand right now. And also with the patterns that we're looking at, with that weekly pattern failing again, going underneath the Chapman Wave inside track, I just don't feel that I need to be aggressive here. In fact, this is one of those cases where we, can, it, we will have enough money to deploy if we start to see higher highs and higher lows. Just keeping it as simple as possible. All right. Now, within that context, a couple of questions that came in over the weekend. Let me see if I can get to them now. Yeah. Can you look at Amazon? Is this the time to increase your, uh, you said, nibble on Amazon? What do you feel like now? I, I'm still in the nibble camp. I this, There was that one moment it was at, I think it was in the area of 130. 135, and now it's at 125, and I'm still not, that was just like your pilot light, just getting a little foot in the door, a little pinky in the door to say, hey, how, how are you acting while the market's in this particular phase? I don't want to be in Amazon on a big, uh, on, on at this point to increase anything other than just that little pilot light nibble. Let's see what happens. I want to see by the end of the week, has Amazon held 122, I think it was. See the gap high um, the day before the actual gap up, the high that day was 121.90 on this 27th of July. The very next session, uh, one, uh, sorry, did I, did I do that wrong? Oh, I guess I must have moved. 122.84 was the high on the 28th. And on the 29th, the low is 132.41. So until I know that that, certainly the left side high that was made on the 22nd, which is 125.50, that's been, ta been tackled over the last couple of days. Not good enough. I want to see, do we get down to that level? Do we get inside into the 120 area, 118 in this particular down phase? Or are we now just about to start a move that says, yes, we could have another bounce before we have a real test of Amazon's strength 
So I'm just saying, step aside. Next question was Exxon. A lot of people have Exxon for a long time. And I've got Exxon at a peak C, even though everything about it looks like that should have been a D. But it is underneath the weekly peak F at 105.30. What was that? 105.57 was the high of the week of the 10th of June. I'll just type that in. 105. Point fifty seven six ten twenty two, and uh, we're at ninety five ten right now. I think that it's if you're holding Exxon, having taken a little bit off. Remember, I was talking about all those other multinational oils back uh, in the big pop up that that was going to choose high. I think that because I would be adding to Exxon right now. I just be holding tight. Let's see what happens. But I think we are getting close to a test in crude oil. Oh, I haven't even got to that. I'll be back. We'll talk about crude oil. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I want to go back and let me just check on something here. Okay, so within the context of the E mini. We've got a little bit of a turnaround here, down 18. Uh, this looks a little too aggressive to me, so I'm going to move it over a little bit because that's what we have to do if the plumb line has moved to the right. And that just says, find another right here. So I'll have to find, that'll be the uh, fulcrum right there, the plumb line, the moving plumb line, and we'll go to the right. And so, okay. If this all works out, that by what time would that be? That would be 10.37. Wow, that's a little aggressive, seven minutes. 
1037. Yeah, by 1037, the plumb line right there should be taken out. And uh, that is at 3915. And if that's taken out, you can see a test of the high that, ugh, that looks very aggressive to me. Uh, the 10 o'clock high of 3920 on the September um, E mini. Uh, well, we'll come back to that. That's not so important right now. What is important is uh, a couple of questions came in. So uh, holding puts on the some of the semiconductors, for instance, Intel is one. And I always think that it's always very difficult for me to do. But the rule of thumb is what you should stick with. And the rule of thumb says, if you're going to short something, short the weakest, because they're the ones that show that they haven't got any strength on the upside so therefore they should continue working to the downside and remember another rule of thumb is stocks that make all-time highs tend to stay in that all-time high sector for a while until things change dramatically and stocks that make new all-time lows tend to do that and intel is one of those so whoever uh, said uh, puts on intel at this particular point you're right because it's down 76 cents at 30.46 down 2.4 percent today uh, NVIDIA is in the same category. Remember, the semiconductors have been acting very We have not gone back into the semiconductors uh, since we've had that really aggressive move to the upside. And now we're just stepping aside. And that's another reason why I don't think there's any reason to be aggressively long. But you can be specifically long, that is, either a short-term trade or a stock that's held very well against all the the downside pressure. Now, this is a very interesting. That was G-C, and this is now coming to D in the weekly chart. In NVIDIA, down 2.38 at 134. Um, these, are, these are not in the two things. One is, if the semiconductors are failing, it says there's a good chance that the general market is going to have a tough time holding gains. And number two is, when eventually the semiconductor index starts to move to the upside, that should encompass the QQQ, the index 100, and the QQQs right now are trading down. If I can just type it in right there, there it is. Yeah, Qs are down in leg E at 292, taking out the left side low. So that, so let me just draw this in. Someone said, could you just do this live on on early next week? So what I do is I like to find a plumb line. What is the plumb line? That's the line on the way up where this, the market stalls or the price of the tradable you're looking at stalls all the way down. And it looks like when it turns around, it could make an equal number of bars on the right side to what it did on the left side. It's bar symmetry. I swear I had a, a webinar based on bar symmetry just recently, a month ago. And look at this. In the bar symmetry, you've got... On the QQQ, the low that was made back in July, it's, I'm going to say for the moment, I'm just going to say the 22nd, 23rd. Um, if you go to the right side, you've gone down below that match in price in a quicker time frame. One bar early. We've taken out the low that was the low of the 26th of July at 293.54 going to the peak G doji candle with the sign and doji following at 334.42 on the 16th of August. And that just says, if you fail, that means that the acceleration down is greater than it was on the way up. And now you're going to look for the next support level. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't come in as a very direct trough until you go back to the 14th of July of 279.80. That's 10 points down from here. And this is already leg E with the potential that it could be a channel wave instant restart on the way down. So I don't want to mess around with this. I'm just saying that the semiconductors are not acting very well right now. We just saw that in some of the leads, uh, like an, uh, not Intel as a lead, but NVIDIA that was a favorite. But what if you go to um, Marvell, M-R-V-L, and Marvell? It's, it didn't even get to a D, and it got. It didn't even get to the 200 period moving average. It's down 73 cents at 45.02, and a very big arch formation uh, in the daily chart, and a peak D in the monthly chart. So even some of your better ones, even Applied Materials, AMAT, made a peak E with a doji candle, and it's coming down 
oh, well, the next low that we'd have to look at would be the low of the 14th of July of 86.41. And the way I do these is if it's very obvious that there's a trough that I can use. So let's go from this one to right there. That's a very, that double top, it's just great if you can use the V or U-shaped bottom as a left side, right side price tie match. But if I do that, it says, oops, got it. It says that we've already run out of time. Uh, did I do that correct? Yes, I did. So that's green and that's pink. And yeah, and that says it hasn't, it's taken a little bit longer to get down there. And this particular pattern says if it get, if it's taken a little longer, there's a chance it could make that low later, but then come back very quickly to test that support level. So the level we're watching here is going to be 86.41, and it's at 89.72. So what would I then do? I draw in the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line. It would have to go to that level. Well, that level's already we passed that level in the number of bars from the left to the right. So uh, that means I have to find another point of reference. And that says I could, in fact, move it to the right or take it to about the 9th of September. The 9th of September is Friday. And Friday, it says that there's a chance by Friday we should be testing 86.41. All right, so a couple of those things I wanted to go through. Another question was, could you show us your um, triple yield chart? Well, um, yes, I can show you that. I didn't really want to add that today, but I'll do that. I did it for subscribers yesterday. There's a triple yield chart, and that's just saying the huge cup, weekly cup formation that made a handle is probably going to take out their left side high and then come back into the handle because that's what cup and handle patterns do. Let me show you. White is the 30-year, brown is the 10-year yield, and the cyan, light blue, is the 5-year yield. And it should be there right now. It should be there right now. Um, all right. If it's not there right now, it should be there right now. And there it is. So here we go. You see the white is just sneaking above the cyan. That's the 30-year. That's a good sign, actually. It says maybe the inversion is just kind of uh, not as bad as it was. So you can see at 34.57 for the yield, 3.457 is just a tad under 3.472 high that was made back in uh, 24th of June. I'll be back in a moment. Oh, is that true? Yeah, he got squeezed out. I'll be back in a moment. Bells of Chapman, Tank, Nish, Sawa, Bells of Young You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So because of the discussion about the Chapman of Roman Candle, I completely forgot about uh, just going through all the different indices as I always do. So let me just do that now. And also, it's a little late. And maybe it's uh, a couple of minutes late, but we did get to that exact level in the um, S&P uh, E-mini that I was targeting. Uh, the 39, whatever it was over there, 39.18 was it? I can't remember now. 39, uh, 25.50 level. We made 30 right there. We made 39.2550 at uh, 10.41. All right, that's the technique. And the closer we get to 3.23 on the next rally, if there is, then the 39.27, 200 period moving average becomes a target. Um, okay, let's get back to our story here. So this is what I wanted to talk about. In the gold, So the goal right now is down four and a half at 17.18. One of the aspects that I've been very impressed with was that the, just the fact that the dollar is screaming at all all time uh, yearly highs, uh, or in multi-year highs, let's just say. Remember, because you've still got that whole uh, area in the, uh, uh, the highs that were made uh, way back in the dollar. So that's at least recovery highs. But what we're looking at is that gold is holding pretty darn well when you think about it. Individual gold stocks, some of them have got pummeled, some of them are holding okay. But more importantly, what I am looking at is, look, gold, the pattern that we're looking at has got this huge cup formation. And now it's almost, this is the opposite of what we're looking at in the weekly chart of the bonds, where I say a cup and handle, not one of my favorite patterns at all, unless you get the low of the cup handle, and then you can ride it so that it bounces high and then comes back to retest the lip of the cup. Well, this is the exact opposite in the gold. It's also got the Chapman Wave falling axe formation, the inverted falling axe formation, rising lows and much higher highs. Then it turns around. But if it makes a peak C, D, or E, and then comes back in this particular expanding cone formation, usually all that happens is it retests the low. It can even step a little bit lower, but it doesn't break down like the dreaded H pattern when it fails at a peak B or an A. So this is a leg A. This is a little miniature dreaded H now. That's different. So if this A starts to plummet, the 1680 area is really important to hold on, on continuous contract for gold. Meantime, back at the ranch, this is... It's, it's doing okay. The MACD is improving histogram-wise, but it's not great. The stochastic's okay, 26, but it's really not good. On balance volume is down. The nine period is way under the 14. Gold has a lot to do, but the fact that it's holding okay is very impressive. The fact that silver is making lower lows and lower highs in the weekly chart, but the daily chart is at a little bit of a pop-up, is okay. But it just says to me that if silver plays catch up to gold, to actually lead, it's going to have to do a lot more. It's 18 right now, 18.02. Huh. 
it needs to get to the 2150 area sometime in September to say, hey, I'm back in the running. At this point, it's just not in the running. It's just running. Uh, and if you're looking at high-grade copper, high-grade copper is down at the lower end, but it's, it's holding okay, not great. I always put it together with wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, which is not that great. Now it's starting to act very weak. We were doing well before. Now it's not doing well at all. So, and that just tells me internationally there's a whole spectrum that goes together with high-grade copper, which is an international um, benchmark for uh, building activity, together with the iShares Timber and Forestry ETF. And that just says, whew, this is not a great time. If you look at the HGX, which is the uh, Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a great chart at all. It's not failing, but it's definitely not acting very well. So I wanted to put that together just to say this is the whippy time. This is where as traders, intraday traders, like we just looked at in a, mo a moment ago, look, is that not just a beautiful uh, a way of assessing uh, strength and weakness? Look at that beautiful cup formation. Now it's starting to uh, attempt the uh, 3927 level in the September E-mini one-minute chart. Um, so you can just go step by step, but that's what I'm saying. So I think that as a trading vehicle right now, we're looking at maybe not getting a big core position of longs. If you have, and this is what I was saying to subscribers, if you have you know, portfolios, you want to ensure that. One of the reasons why we went short the Dow via the DOG back in the 22nd of uh, August, it was because I just wanted that insurance. It was way more important to have some insurance than to, to necessarily be trading. But you can trade because uh, that's just the nature of what we, we do for shorter term people uh, in the market. So look at this. The crude oil is down 23 cents at 86.65. The more times we try to test the base, you know, you know uh, Tom O'Brien always says you got a ceiling. And the more times you can push the ceiling, you can eventually break it. And on the base, on the floor, the more times you hit that, that floor, the weaker it becomes. Well, this is the base that we're looking at right now. And it says that by next week, there's a chance that crude oil takes out the support of the 15th of April of 8393. That's the continuous contract, remember? And if that's taken out, then the last support is 8320 that was made the week of the 6th, 18th of March. Once we're below that, it says you've got to look at the weekly chart and say that looks like a dreaded H from the weekly chart that's 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 uh, impacting the monthly chart and that the 82 level, the 200 period exponential moving average, which since the crude oil broke above, and that was the week of, I think it was December, yeah, December of 2020 when it hit 34 after being at 28, uh, it hasn't, it's it's touched that 14 period moving average once or twice, but it hasn't broken under it. That means all of a sudden crude oil. Now, if that's the case, then why isn't the IYT, the, this is the Dow Jones, uh, I share Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund. What a name. Just call it the index, the transportation index. Um, is in a leg D to the downside in the daily chart. The weekly chart is not all, all that good. It's just flipping to um, this is the start of a week. So we can only say at the start of the week, it's flipping to an S, which is sell, because the 9 is under the 14. And all I'm saying is that it's holding OK in the monthly chart. But uh, with crude oil pulling back like this, you should have seen the um, a better response in the IYT. So with that said, I'm going to just make it as clear as I can that this is selectivity. You want to be in areas that are showing some kind of uh, strength. And if you can do that, even then you want to find the strongest stocks in that particular sector. Now, um, even more important than talking about stocks, I wanted to show you something here that had to do with what impacts stocks or what do, what do stocks do to impact this particular index? And that is the VIX. The VIX ran to a higher high in leg E this morning. It hit 27.80. It's starting to pull back a little bit here, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if this this week we find that the VIX is actually holding above the 24.37.
200 field exponential moving average, but it's chopping and holding kind of steady as if fund managers are buying the volatility index as some kind of either insurance or to, 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 to garner some possibility of the markets being weak, even on rallies. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's now up. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're back, and I think it's really important. The Dow's now up 35, the S&P's up 5. It was really important to get rid of all that selling pressure this morning. But that doesn't mean to say, hey, now we can go much higher. It just says that my, my belief, as I said, to subscribe to my opening call, I see internal strength, but I also see weakness. And that's the reason why I think September, as I said, before we go into September, it's going to be a really choppy month. And you can see it. Look, here's the triple yield uh, weekly. That cup formation with the handle right now says there's a good chance we're going to pop above the high that was made. Does it get smoothed out? Surely it's the same thing. It should be 34.70, yes. There should be a move above 34.72. And then at some point over the, the two, three weeks, as it gets there and goes a little higher, it should come back into the handle. But you can see what this has done with the forestry ETF. Look at that weekly chart, that A, 
uh, uppercase A and the sergeant of fat is a gray A and it should come back to the 200 period moving average. And even the high grade, um, sorry, the Philadelphia Housing Index, that A says, yeah, this is really important at uh, 377. A close under 369 says, uh oh, failure pattern. But a move into the 383 sometime this week says, no, no, we're just in this range. And that's really what I wanted to say. If you're looking at different sectors, look at the XLE trading at 79.46 down. 51 cents made it peak D beautiful left side right side price time match in the Chapman wave methodology look here it is look at that that's to the high that I de designated as a potential high and that was the candle of the 15th of June at uh, 84.47 well we're going to 84 uh, 85.18 just a tad above and then came down so I think that the select energy spider fund can pull back and if it starts to close under 70 the close under 77 suggests that that's going to be in the digestive phase for a little while we'll come back stronger a little later on but right now digestive i'm going to hand over to steve rhodes great programming all day did you i'll be back with tom a little later today and uh, check out my opening call my day to have a wonderful day